Good morning. I am Mo Wagner and welcome to CMI's first live stream ever. Not sure why it's taken us so long, but we are so excited to be here with you. Um, and thank you to Restream for um, helping us out and letting us use their platform. Um, so we just wanted to say um, hello. And this week we wanted to talk about visual storytelling. Next week we are holding our first visual storytelling summit. Um, if you think about it, we are in a very visual world right now and we're communicating in a lot of nonverbal ways. Um, and if we are trying, sometimes a written word is not enough. So next week, we're gonna bring together um, a lot of some of the leaders in the industry who kind of excel at visual storytelling. Um, looks like Zara from the UK has just joined us. Thank you, Zara, it's good to see you. Um, so let's talk about the question of the day. Hi, Lexi from Louisiana as well. Let us talk about the uh, question of the day. And our question of the day is, what brands have you recently seen that um, are telling a compelling visual story now? Um, especially in, during this time of the pandemic, you know, we're seeing a lot of brands experimenting with different things and that includes visual storytelling. So uh, let us know your answer for the question of the day. If you leave us a comment anytime throughout this live stream, um, we will enter you in a chance to win a CMI mug. So speaking of um, experts in visual storytelling, we are very lucky to have a creative director with us here at CMI who is an expert in all things design. So we ask JK Kalinowski to join us today. Hello, JK. Hey, Mo, how are you? How are you? Good, how Good. are you today? I'm doing great. It is great. a gorgeous day out in Cleveland. Hopefully everyone who is watching right now is having just as beautiful of a day. I'll tell you what, I was going to, as you can see, I'm in my uh, my basement office. I was gonna do this from outside, but there's way too many birds uh, gonna chime in on everything. So I figured maybe I'd, uh, <laughs> I wanted to take in the sunshine a little bit. So I might sneak out a little early today and go enjoy some 70 degree weather. Rare 70 oh, degree weather in November, huh? We, I do not blame you at all. Do yeah. not blame you at all. Well, so most everyone who follows CMI is probably really familiar with your work. Um, but those who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, why don't you tell us a little bit by, by, bit by your, of yourself? Sure. Um, uh, yeah, as Mo said, I'm JK Kalinowski. Um, I am uh, CMI's creative director. I have been uh, uh, running the design at Content Marketing Institute and Content Marketing World for a little over 10 years. Um, uh, since basically the beginning, all the way back from jump to 42. Uh, yeah, and I take care of everything from, you know, our daily blog alerts to stage design at Content Marketing World and everything in between. So everything orange um, is, it, it's certainly a team effort, but uh, we have a lot of fun doing it, so. Absolutely. <laughs> and he's not telling you, but he's very big on shenanigans. So <laughs> if you're looking for no. shenanigans within the CMI team, it's typically because he is behind it. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, just real, a quick story on that, Mo. Uh, my wife is a teacher and she forgot her lunch. So she texted me to put her lunchbox out on the porch. She was going to run home. And of course, I had to draw pictures and put them inside the lunchbox and silly messages. And I just get a text message back about 10 minutes ago that just said, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> the mission well, we, <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely don't think you're a jerk on our team. <laughs> um, we're really lucky to have you as a creative director. Not everyone has a creative director on staff and sometimes people do and they just don't get along with them. <laughs> so we know, you know, we are lucky. We are very fortunate on our team. So you've been in the business for a really long time. Well, mm -hmm. not trying to age you, but you've been no, in the sir. business for a long time. Yeah. So how would you say visual storytelling has evolved um, since you began? Um, wow. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is leaps and bounds in the, it, just in the 10 years that I've you know, been involved. Uh, from the beginnings of my days with CMI and, and, and you know, getting into content marketing, it, you know, 
it was all about the written word and blogs and you know people getting their opinions down and their 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 brand stories down on the page but normally it was very verbiage and word based and not a lot of visuals put in it and half the time when there were visuals put in it it was kind of like throwaway stock photography for, to break up the copy or you know some random picture or maybe a, a word based uh, graph or something um, then as the internet and you know the web of things started to evolve then you know things started getting a little bit more friendly towards visuals but what i really noticed in the past few years which i find incredibly um intriguing is uh their content marketers are completely buying in on visuals now and now they are using the visual as a foundation and building a narrative around it um you know, I've seen this happen so many times. Um, and one of the greatest, I mean, I can give you an example that's one of my personal favorites, one of my early personal favorites. Um, a friend of CMI, a uh, friend and family member of CMI, Todd Wheatland, at the time uh, was working for Kelly Services, the, the employment agency. And uh, he was their head of marketing. And they did a very large infographic. Um, I mean, extremely large, that they ended up uh, breaking it up into sections. It was like a visual storytelling map and they actually would just release it in different areas across all their platforms and have a, a complete narrative built around that section of the map. But you could totally tell they started with the map and built their narrative around it. Well, so let me go back to a little bit of what you had said. So let's talk about buy-in then. Sure. Do you think the buy-in has been easier since when, you know, your career began to where we are now? Oh, most certainly. Um, and I think it, it, I think a lot of it has to do, like I said, with the evolution of, of the web and, and, you know, the platforms that people are using because a lot of the platforms now, specifically when it comes to social are very visual and, you know, you are, you have to grab that attention quick. I mean, we don't, I don't want to bring up the goldfish theory because it's, you know, everybody talks about the goldfish theory, but obviously Mo, you know, in the world that we live in, you need to grab attention quickly. So you might have to have a great visual that's going to pop off somebody's feed immediately. And then they'll tend to read the tweet or read the, the, the narrative that you, you tie to that visual. Um, I think, visuals have become with the growth of the, specifically social media too. Um, you know, the platforms, you, you know, Instagram for, for example, is a huge one. I mean, you don't have a Instagram is the, the one where you're grabbing people's attention via a picture or a piece of, you know, visual content. So absolutely. So you've already touched upon social. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about social. Let's talk about the CMI blog you know, we work on a lot of platforms. So how does visual storytelling kind of fit into that multi-channel strategy that a lot of us are working with now? Yeah, well, I think one of the biggest things is, um, cons well, first is consistency is key. Uh, there are so many platforms that we're all working with. I mean, you, you and I work on so many together um, on, you know, across CMI and all of our brands. Uh, but the biggest thing is, is, you know, anything that you want to, I, I'm just using us for an example, Mo, but everything that you would need from me, you know that it's going to have um, a certain look. I mean, obviously we have brand standards and everything, but, you know, it all has to have a certain look to, um, in, in our case, to make sure our audience understands, hey, this is where it's from. This is, you know, and it's, on top of it all, it's the ideation process as well. You know, you and I get together, we get Kathy, our marketer, uh, Amanda, uh, Steph, you know, there's a, it's, it's a, a team effort to make these things work. Um, it's not just, hey, JK, come up with something and I come up with it, you throw it up. Because half the time that wouldn't work if we didn't have buy-in from across the team and, and ideas and, hey, this would work, but this won't. I think, um, a group, you know, one is definitely consistency and two, it has to be, you know, your, your team has to have complete buy-in and, and absolutely um, submit their ideas and make sure everything works across the board. 
Now, I know we have a lot of things, you know, working right now. And I think also something really important to remember is planning ahead, right? I think a lot of people sometimes think that like magically you could design something, you can create something. And I think that's something that um, you've really instilled on us that we are able to do all of that, but we need to plan ahead. And not only um, just from a uh, workflow standpoint, but we need to plan ahead so that you talked about it's that collaboration right where um we can repurpose a lot of the visuals that you create if we do that planning right yeah i i I mean that is that is a hundred percent right mo you know the fact of giving you know we always have those you know like i hate using the term news jacking but there are certain times where we need to turn something very quickly because you know hey Mm -hmm. maybe something in the world's going on or something's going on with our industry that we really need to get in front of um and and get our ideas out there but you know planning ahead certainly helps us because that way on top of getting our brand messaging and our visual messaging correct we can also test, test, test to see how it looks and how people are going to read it and everything like that. Because, you know, sometimes you and I have known this in the past and we're still, we still work through it. Um, you, you can design or create something for Instagram and it completely looks different or, you know, kind of doesn't grab the attention that it would on Facebook or so, you know, these platforms are all changing, ever changing. You know, they're, they're, they're certainly not evergreen. That's for sure. We know that. <laughs> so, so there's always something that we have to tweak or the messaging or um, so, yeah, planning ahead to give yourself that time to hammer out the correct visual, the correct message and the correct testing. So, you know, it's getting to the people you need it to get to. You know, you say testing. So is there a platform, something on social or is it something you know, a uh, creator for CM world, what's your favorite to experiment with? Um, well, the biggest thing for me is I like, uh, uh, obviously I, you know, as well as I, I run a lot of stuff past you because you're a lot better in that, <laughs> in that world. Um, you know, don't believe him, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, 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 the crazy thing for me is, and this is no slight to any platform over another, but you know, it, it's very, it can be very tough. Um, because some platforms don't allow you like case in point, like Facebook, you can't use as much copy in your image as maybe you could in LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever. Um, so there's some testing, you know, sites that I go to, uh, just to make sure, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I, I use Facebook. I honestly, I just go to Facebook and run their, their, their test, you know, some of the stuff that I create just to make sure that, I'm following within their guidelines because I don't want to give you something that you can't use. So I want to get my foundation design done and appro- approved by Facebook before I even present it to you to make sure it's going to work. So, and that's appreciated. Absolutely uh, appreciated. Yeah. Well, we talked about uh, CMI hosting the visual storytelling summit next week mm-hmm. and a friend of CMI's who's Tyler Lassar from uh, Vidyard he is going to speak about uh, humor and empathy and human connection. Mm-hmm. So I guess with what you do, um, when you're trying to engage that audience, right? How important is that emotional connection? Well, I think, you know, obviously right now in the times we're living in, making a, a human connection to our audiences is the utmost key. Um, you know, how many, how many videos, how many commercials, how YouTube videos. I mean, I swear if I hear unprecedented times one more time, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I'm going to lose it. And, you know, I think somebody had a coffee mug that says I miss precedented times on it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but the biggest thing is, is authenticity is key. If you truly are an empath with your audience and you're, you're feeling what they're feeling. And a lot of us are, we're human. Um, you need to make that human connection and you need to be authentic in your messaging, not just your messaging, but everything you do, you know, we're, we're feeling what everyone else is feeling that's going through this. It's a global pandemic and we're trying to navigate our way through everything. And this is a perfect time for brands to really be able to, 
you know, kind of step away from that mold that they've always had as as marketers and stuff and say, hey, look, we are with you in this. Um, you know, one of the best examples that I that I just I just saw over the weekend. Uh, and I don't know if you caught this or not, but it was a viral image that Burger King shared. And uh, it was a it was a letter from Burger King saying, hey, you know, we 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 like our Whoppers, but please visit McDonald's. Visit Pizza Hut, visit Subway, because you're not only saving business for franchi franchisees, you're helping their employees. And Burger King's like, hey, when things get crazy or, you know, the, the world starts to get a little bit more sane, we hope you come back to the home of the Whopper. But until then, you know, spread the love. And that was inc an incredible and it, it was an incredible piece of marketing, simple, effective. Mm -hmm. And will they lose? My guess is they're going to get more market share from doing something so simple and so uh, empathetic, you know. And I like what you said about helping because that's what we do as content marketers, right? We exactly. want to be able to help each other and something like uh, what Burger King did. It just shows clearly, you know, a want to help others. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, so that's. That's it's true. I mean, you, I, I, you know, when you want when you come out as a, you know, you think of Mr. Rogers, the Mr. Rogers statement, look to the helpers and he made everybody feel good. Right. So that's the kind of if, if you want to take one thing away, uh, you said it. You said it perfectly, Mo, is just just be willing to help because that's how we're going to get through this. So we talked a little bit about collaboration already. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and we talked about buy-in, but sometimes it's not as easy as we thought. And that's another topic that we're gonna be touching upon next week um, at the Visual um, Storytelling Summit. Uh, what do you think, um, in your, from your experience, what are some tips for um, getting marketers, getting creatives, like all on the same page? Oh yeah, well, it, it, not, to, not to sound like a skipping record, Mo, but you know, to kind of go back to our previous conversation, uh, it all it, it comes down to uh, the foundational ideas, the ideation process that you go through as a team. Make sure that everybody that's involved in the project has an idea of what's going on and an opportunity to give some input. Because once you get buy in across your team, you, you all have a clear, clear vision of, of your message and your focus. And the 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 goals of what you're setting uh so everybody's on the same page there's no muddy water everybody knows what how to get from point a to point b the and the messaging and the distribution and everything in between so that starts from the foundational ideas of the the actual message and the design all the way up to how we're pushing it out and how we're talking about it and how we're sharing it um you know we're, we're very fortunate to have a very close and tight team. You know, I know sometimes it's hard when, when you're working in a marketing staff or, a, or marketing team that's very large and immense. But, um, and designers, uh, obviously I know this for a fact that designers can be very moody and, and possessive and I don't wanna do this and I don't wanna do that because I've been there. I do that, I still do that, you know this. <laughs> and no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, um, I think that is a fundamental um, uh, uh, way to get a, a, a clear, to, uh, fundamentally get clear vision across the board is to get everybody involved from the utmost start and then work from there. So this may be a hard one to answer, but what happens when there is budding heads? What happens, how do you try to explain to you know, whomever, someone sure. in social, someone who is writing an editorial, how do you try to get your viewpoint across and who's going to win? Who ultimately wins that? Well, it's, it, I guess what it comes down to, like, I can use examples for, you know, like stuff that I've designed uh, that uh, I was, I felt really strong about and went up to bat and then found out that, hey, it's not going to work because normally when it comes down to it, over at you know like functionality over attitude and opinion really takes precedence when you're dealing with this um 
you know, like I might design something that I really feel strongly about and you could come back to me and say, hey, it's not going to work because of this, this and this. And, you know, I sit there and I try to adjust it and it's still not working. Then we know that we just need to go back to the drawing board. And, yeah, I might be a little gruff about it. But, you know, ultimately, we at, at going back to our conversation about, you know, a clear vision to the to an end goal. We're not going to get there if I still keep fighting about everything um, or or. So then case in point, like there's sometimes where I'll be designing something and I'll be working with someone that says, hey, I want to use this color or use this or do this. And I'll be like, well, here's here's why that's not going to work. <laughs> or, or this is why I think it's not going to work. And then present a, my logic. And there's usually a pretty good, you know, give and take. I think we very rarely, I mean, obviously some people have to, some people really do butt heads and it's unfortunate, you know, because that's what happens when you're in large teams or even in small teams sometimes. But I, I think we're very fortunate at CMI. We kind of understand each other and we've worked together long enough to know what works and what doesn't. And I want everyone to know he brought up color because that was me. <laughs> that was, he's talking about me two weeks ago. I know. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, so let's talk about 2021. We're all ready for 2020 to be over. So oh, let's look you. ahead to 2021. What's one area related to visual storytelling that you're curious about that you kind of want to dive into? Yeah. Wow. Um, I think one of the biggest for me is uh, the tech and ideas behind the tech coming up. Um, who would have thought that you and I would be doing a live stream to our to our audience uh eight months ago you know what i mean um who would have thought that i would be celebrating christmas over zoom you know uh so how quickly everything is moving in this space due to the pandemic uh i am super curious to see what is you know on the horizon because for the foreseeable future this is how we're going to have to be doing things and how we're going to have to be getting in front of our audiences so i'm really stoked especially at the the our you know visual storytelling summit to sit down and listen to some of the, the the our keynotes and our speakers that are really talking about what's next in you know the 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 tech space because there's so much right now that that i don't know and there's so much on the horizon so i think that's the next big thing for for all of us as visual storytelling uh creators now you can tell I'm still nervous being on camera and, and we're really like, that's what made me very apprehensive to start doing live streams even, you know, before 2020. But I think like you had hit upon it, like all the Microsoft Teams, all the Zooms, everything like that has really um, kind of helped me. But I kind of, just like you, I want to learn more and next week is a great opportunity. And, you know, I'm going to continue learning. We have friends, um, at Restream, at Agora Polls, places like that who are going to completely help kind of, you know, bring us to the next level. So that's what I'm excited for for 2021. Right. Absolutely. Cool. Well, I, is there anything that you want to share with us um, that we haven't touched upon about? Because you are a fountain of knowledge when it comes to uh, creative design and visual storytelling. And guys, if you have not been to a content marketing world, you need to go onto our Facebook page and you need to see some of the sets that he has designed, our posters, everything about CM World. If you're looking, it, it, JK's had a hand in it, if not all of it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mo. Thank you very much. You're, you're, you're making me my heart flutter. <laughs> and I'm blessed to <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I really, I really appreciate it. It's, it's much love to you for, for, for those kind words. And this is, you know, just a, unbelievably exciting to be able to do this and, you know, reach out and, and, you know, that's, that's the one thing that I, I think I want to leave with is the fact that how excited I was this past content marketing world. Um, how many people engaged in a, you know, the virtual events, the virtual event space, what's soon to become the hybrid space. I think um, the way that we're going to speak and get in front of our audiences and friends is going to fundamentally change from here on out, uh, only for the better, because we're gonna have so many more ways to get in front of people and um, engage with our audiences. And it just you know means the world to me to know that there are just people sitting on 
here talking to you, listen to you and I chit chat, you know, it's, it's the coolest thing. So. And we are so grateful for that. We have people from in our community from around the world who are listening to us for our first live stream. So thank you to everyone. Yeah. JK, thank you for joining us today. I, we, I cannot thank you enough. It is uh, so much fun. And hopefully we can do this more often. I would love to. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you so much. And Thank you to everyone who is watching. Please join us for the Visual Storytelling Summit. Uh, reach out to JK if you have any questions and let us know what you are looking for from these live streams. We would love to be able to do more of them in the future. Absolutely. So with that, I will say goodbye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Take care.